Hallelujah. Amen. It's five o'clock right now. Why don't we just stand on our feet? Welcome to City Harvest Church. Welcome to our Saturday 5 p.m. service. Can you help me turn to five other people? You know, give them a fist bump and say, it's so good to be praising God together with you in this place. That's right, go fist bump five people and tell them it's so good to be praising God together with you. Amen. You know, for those of you that are watching online, we want you to know that we warmly welcome you as well and we can't wait for you to join us back on site. You know, for Psalm Group Meeting this week, we are learning about the love of God. And as I read on Psalms 36 verse 5, it says, Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens and your faithfulness to the skies. So today, I want you to know that God loves you very much. His love is so great that it reaches to the heavens and His faithfulness towards you is everlasting. So don't you love Jesus today? Let's just give God a big hand. Hallelujah!
you until all our fears go away and all our sickness go away because in your presence there is joy there is freedom and there's liberty there's power in the name of Jesus come on we welcome you God we welcome your presence here today hallelujah
Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Matches love and beauty, endless worth. Nothing in this world will satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Your presence is heaven to me. Your presence is heaven to me.
is everything, God. And today, Lord, we say we want more. God, we say we want more, more of your presence. Friends, if you want more, just lift up your hands, just draw, just draw his presence down this evening.
just stand on the shores Go deeper today Oh, go deeper Oh, I want to draw closer to you, Lord Lift up your worship Lift up your voice
presence of the Lord is, there's freedom, there's joy, heaven is there. To sing to Him a new song. Let the river of life flow. You know, this afternoon we can stand believing. God says, my thoughts towards you are thoughts of peace to give you a hope and a future. You have a great future in God. No weapon formed against you shall ever prosper because greater is He who is in you than he who is in the world. That our God shall supply all your needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Let's go ahead and praise the Lord. Amen. We love you, Lord. We love you, we love you. We love you, Lord. Those of you that are sick in your body, you can trust in what He says. He's Jehovah Rapha. He's the Lord, your healer. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 17 on the cross, Jesus took our infirmity and bore every physical pain. Tonight, if you're sick in your body, whether you're on site, you're watching us online, some of you may be in a hospital tuning in right now wherever you are you can believe in what he says in the name of Jesus there is healing in the name of Jesus every demon shall flee in the name of Jesus you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover let's just begin to pray right now shall we 
Father, we command every sickness to go in the name of Jesus tonight. We pray for those that are down with cancer right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. We pray for Pastor Bob who is at home sick with flu, with fever. Be healed, Pastor Bob, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for Pastor Kim Hock that has cancer in the name of Jesus. Kim Hock be healed in the name of Jesus. Pastor Meng, be healed in your kidney in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Shuduriala, Vincent Kang, be healed in the name of Jesus. The tumor in your brain will disappear and go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Shuduriala, Karabahadariya, Lord, we trust in you. We trust in you. We trust in you. We trust in you. How many of you here tonight, you need fresh direction from God? You need you need to know you have a hope and a future. Maybe you're at a crossroad tonight. Maybe you need a breakthrough. You need God to speak to you. You need God to be with you. You need His presence to go with you in your project, in your career, in this next season of, of your life. How many of you, you want the greater presence of the Lord? Just lift up your hands right now. Why don't we just begin to pray in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we just pray tonight in the name of Jesus. We pray for wisdom. We pray for guidance. We pray for the peace of the Lord to be the umpire of our hearts tonight. We pray for open doors. Doors that no one can shut. Doors that the forces of evil cannot close. Lord, you are the key. You have the key of death and Hades. Jesus, you're the Alpha, you're the Omega. You will open doors and nothing can stand in the way. Everybody just pray in the Spirit. We put our faith in you. We put our trust in you. situation. In the midst of death, He brings life. We love you, Lord. Your presence is heaven to us. Your have presence is peace and joy to us. We love you. Just take a, a little bit more, just a few more moments, just love it. Slip up your hands, slip up your hearts. Yeah. All over this arena, from the front to the back. Those of you at home, just slip up your hands. Just receive the love of God. Receive the blessing of God. Receive the peace that you will. Hallelujah. Father, we commit tonight's service into your loving hands. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all you have done for us on the cross and what you're continuing to do for us by sending us the Holy Spirit. Spirit of love, draw us deeper into your divine embrace. We commit the whole service into your loving hands and all God's people say, Amen. If you love the Lord, give the Lord a big clap. Hallelujah. Woo! Give the Lord praise. Somebody shout, Woo! Make a joyful noise! Yeah! Amen. Amen. You worship so beautifully. God is good all the time. And all the time, God, God is good. Give Him a big clap one more time. Hallelujah. Amen. Before you're seated, will you just bless somebody on your left and right and, and just say, I'm so glad to worship God with you. Will you just do that right now? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord.
the wonderful presence of God here in this place. Are you still happy? 5 p.m. service? Welcome to City Harvest Church. For those of you watching us online, we want to thank you for tuning in. And those of you here on site, what a wonderful presence of the Lord here in this place. And right now, if you are here with us for the very first time, in City Harvest Church, in our 5 p.m. service, we want to very welcome, warmly you, warmly welcome you. <laughs> I think today is 2014, still New Year. Why don't you turn to your neighbour and say Happy New Year? <laughs> That's right, we want to warmly welcome all of you here in this place. If you are here for the first time, we want you to know that on the left-hand side of the hall, we have the hot spot where we have special brew freshly brewed coffee for all of you. We want to say hello to you, say hi to you, and whatever questions that you have for us, we have very friendly greeters there, and they will answer you of all your questions. Amen and amen. Today is the first weekend of February, and today is also communion weekend. All of you here, you should have your communion elements on your seat. If you do not have one, just raise up your hands, and our ushers will just very quickly pass to you. A few of you, your hands are raised. So the ushers, please help me to pass the communion elements to all of them. So while they are doing that, why don't we just look at the screen right now and shall we just read the Apostles' Creed together right now. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the day. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now Jesus, He also taught His disciples how to pray the Lord's Prayer. So shall we just pray the Lord's Prayer together right now? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive others who have sinned against us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Now we all know that in the Apostles' Creed, it says that Jesus died. He was buried and he was resurrected. So we know today as we worship the Lord, how many of you can feel the presence of God here in this place? We know that we are worshipping a living Saviour, a Saviour that hears us, a Saviour that feels us, and a Saviour that is here to answer our prayer. So as we partake of the Holy Communion, we are remembering what our Lord Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross. Jesus took our sins. He offered to us forgiveness. He took away our sickness and He offered to us healing. All of us here, we are very grateful thankful for the work of the cross. The Bible says that we must examine our hearts before we partake the Holy Communion. So why don't we just take a moment right now, shall we just close our eyes for a moment and let us just examine our hearts. And if there are areas in our lives that are not right with the Lord, let's just ask the Lord for His forgiveness. Let us also ponder about His grace, His love, His mercies, toward us. Jesus, your presence is a heaven to us. In your presence, there's fullness of joy, fullness of peace. In your presence, there's healing. Thank you for the work of the cross. You took our sins, you offered to us forgiveness. You took away all our sickness and you offered to us healing. And because of you, Jesus, we can have victory, we can have new life. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone say, Amen and Amen.
This bread is the body of Christ that was broken for the healing of our body. Brothers and sisters, let's partake of the body of Christ and the healing and receive the healing of our body right now. This cup, it is the blood of Christ that was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. Let us all partake of this cup, the blood of Jesus that has cleansed us and made all of us whole. Amen. Let's pray for a while. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't we just take a moment to just thank the Lord for all that He has done for us. We love you because you first loved us. We pray, O oh God, that we will not just know in our head of how much you love us, but all of us here, we will experience your love, that all of us may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. And as we experience your love, let all of us walk in a way of love, just like how you, Jesus, you have loved us, you have given up yourself, you gave yourself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. So thank you for all that you have done for us. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone say, Amen and Amen. Let's get ready to give God our offering right now. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Audrey. Truly heaven is here in this place. Amen. Because God's presence is here with us. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Right now, let's just prepare our hearts to collect God's tithes and offerings for this weekend. Can you please look with me to Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 16 to verse 17. Amen. The Bible says, And they shall not appear before the Lord empty-handed. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord your God, which he has given you. Here we see Moses reminding the people of God, of God's faithfulness throughout their journey in the wilderness for 40 years and how God has delivered them, how God has healed them, protected them, provided for them and finally entering into the promised land. And Moses, as he gathered the people, he says, guys, remember, remember God's faithfulness unto us. Let's respond to Him in our giving for all that He has done for us. How many of you all know that God has, has really blessed you in your life all these years? Can I see your hand? Amen. Yes. God is the source of our lives through the good times and, not, and sometimes the not so good times. But God has blessed us and given us all that we have, our families, our jobs, our health, our finances, our relationships, and even our very own breath. You know, this weekend, we come to the end of the 15 days of Chinese New Year celebration. And many of us will celebrate Yuan Xiao. And how do we do that? We do that by eating Tang Yuan with our loved ones. I remember, you know, when my daughters were a lot younger, we shared a bowl of Tang Yuan together. You know, the ones with peanut feelings inside? You know, maybe tonight you'll be having some of it or this weekend. But before she started eating, I asked her for one Tang Yuan. She looked down at her bowl. She looked up and she said, Dad, but there's only five. If I give you one, I will only have four left. I was thinking in my heart, if I didn't go to, all the way to that famous dessert store to buy for you, you will have zero. <laughs> you won't have any at all. So I said, so would you give that one Tang Yuan. She thought for a while, struggled, and then she said, okay, Dad, you can have as many Tang Yuan as you want because I love you. But please remember to keep some for me. <laughs> you know, there are times when it comes to giving, we struggle or we give grudgingly or we give in a way that we feel obligated to give. But Church, let us not forget that God is the one that has given us everything. Can you help me turn to your neighbours and say, God has given us everything. Amen. You know, He owns everything and instead of Him demanding from us, 
He gives us an opportunity to give back to Him as an act of love and devotion to Him. You know, God is interested in our acts of devotion. He is not interested in our acts of obligation. Today, as we come before the presence of God, let us not come empty-handed. You know, let us bring our tithes and our offerings before Him to give Him our very best because God owns everything that we have. And we know and we know that we know that we can never, never outgive Him because God is a faithful God. If you believe that, let's give the Lord a big hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So church, are you ready to give this evening? Before you give, I want to give you a few instructions. By now, you'll know how to give by the various giving options by scanning the QR code on the LED screen. Alternatively, you can give by cash, by check, or by credit card. Please make your checks payable to City Harvest Church. If you need an offering envelope, you can find them at the back, uh, in the front of the seat pocket in front of you. Or you can just simply just lift up your hands and our friendly ashes will serve you. Amen. Amen. Over there? Yeah. Over here? Thank you so much, ashes. Amen. And if you're watching us online, we just want to encourage you to participate in this giving together with us. You can click on the give icon on your screens right now. Or alternatively, you can also give via the AXS machines located island-wide. Amen. Church, are you ready to give? Why don't we just look to the Lord in prayer this evening? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your wonderful presence that we sense here in this place. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness to us individually and as a church. We thank you for all that you have done for us all these years, leading us, protecting us, providing for us. As we come to you today, God, I pray, God, we will not come to you empty-handed, but in faith, knowing that all that we have belongs to you and that we can never, never outgive you. So I pray this afternoon, God, receive our tithes, receive our offerings as an act of love and devotion unto you. Lord, we say that we love you, that we put our trust in you. Bless us as we give to you. In Jesus' name, we all pray and everyone say aloud, Amen, Amen. Ashes, you may serve the people. You know, could you just kindly drop the offering envelopes into the offering buckets as you pass them along the row? Amen. Church, thank you for giving generously to the Lord. You know, right now we have some live announcements for you. I want to hand this time over to Cal. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Chinsian. God loves a cheerful giver. Hi, church. We have two announcements for you this afternoon. And the first announcement is regarding uh, our Rave Camp. Rave Camp is back. So all poly students, just make some noise over here. Amen. Happening from the 13th to the 15th of March. Monday to Wednesday, come and join us for a camp that will be filled with exciting activities and deep encounters with the Lord. The camp fee is at $30 for all of our members and a special discounted price of $20 for all our brand new friends. You can register at the link that you see on the screen or you can visit us at the booth, our rave, rave camp booth at Hall 605 right after the service. You can make the payment and collect all the necessary consent forms at the booth as well. And if you are a freshie and you have absolutely no idea what Rave Camp or what, what Emerge Poly Society is all about, you can come to the booth and connect with us. Uh, all the freshies who pop by at the booth will receive a special gift from Emerge. So come and join us and you'll be so blessed. The second announcement and the last announcement for today is for all our Emerge Youth. So all of you who are Emerge Youth and below 25 years old, can you just make some noise? Amen. You know, we'll be having our first Emerge service with Pastor Kong. And the theme for this service this year will be Back to School Edition. It'll be happening right in this hall on the 26th of February, Sunday, 3.30 p.m. We want to commit this new academic year to God and pray that He will really anoint all our students to be the salt and the light in our schools. We will also be sharing some exciting things they can look forward to here in Emerge in 2023. So help me by turning to a youth and say, don't miss our first Emerge service. Amen. 
So let's get ready to hear the Word of God from our pastor. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I have two other announcements. First of all, this coming Tuesday, 7th of February, is our first church-wide leaders meeting. Yeah. So as leaders, all of you want to start the year fresh and strong, right? I have a very important word for all of you. Joel, thank you so much here. Yeah, praise the Lord. So if you are a staff, a cell group leader, a potential cell leader, a ministry leader, a connect group leader, this meeting is for you. So I don't want you to be stressed uh, rushing from work hungry, so we have prepared even more food than the last time. So just come anytime from 7 p.m. There'll be a lot of food. I promise, more than the last time. Yeah, a lot of food. Then your neighbors say a lot of food. A lot. Yeah, yeah. And while you eat, you can fellowship one another and have koinonia, or sharing or connecting in the spirit. Then somebody will say koinonia is good. Uh, yeah, it's good. Yeah. At 8 p.m. We start our meeting promptly, and I promise you, it'll be one of the most important leaders' meeting you have ever attended in your whole life, okay? Now, next, one church pillar that we want to rebuild is our marketplace ministry. In City Harvest Church, we always say this, the meeting place is the training place for the marketplace, yeah? So do you know that the last time we have a church-wide marketplace dinner was in 2015, eight years ago? So Wednesday, 1st of March, we'll be having our first marketplace dinner after a very long time. I want to invite all of you, business people, professionals, managers, executives, whether you're in the IT, sales, education, healthcare, military, finance, business development, operations, engineering, what else? Civil service, private sector, working in a non-profit organization. As long as you are a working person, I have a word from God at the Marketplace Dinner that I believe will strengthen you and will bless you. Now, we are serving an international buffet. The cost per person is only $68. Come with your spouse, your husband, your wife, your partners, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your colleagues, your business associates. Come with the whole cell groups. I, I heard some cell groups have booked entire tables. Yeah? Or go to our website and reserve your place. Turn to somebody and say, see you at our Marketplace Dinner. Praise the Lord. Are you ready for the Word of God? Yeah. After being away for a number of years, the first thing I felt when I came back here, it was, wow, you guys are too busy. <laughs> Remember I said that many times? In church, to our staff, in our leaders' meeting, in our weekend services, you guys are way, way, way too busy. And many of you gave me a nervous smile or a jittery laughter. Uh, Pastor, what are you talking about? Aren't you just like us, if not even worse? <laughs> I confess there's some truth in that. But there's an old truth. I used to be like that. Busyness was my middle name. But I have changed. I have now learned to be less busy. And over the years, I have learned that Henri Newman is correct. Busyness is a curse. It really is. Being too busy, living an overly hectic life is a cause of stress and anxiety. And many become burnout, depressed, unhappy. So why can't we stop being busy all the time? Because we wear our busyness like a badge of honor. To mean, see, I'm an achiever. I'm doing many important things. I'm so busy. I'm needed by everyone. Everyone needs me. I'm special. So whenever people ask you, how are you? How have you been? What is our most usual response? Oh, I'm so busy. You can't believe it. How busy I have been. Sometimes, even when we are not that busy, we still say that. Oh, I'm so busy. Have you been busy, la? <laughs> Why? Why? Because we don't want people to think that we are lazy, that we have no purpose, no goal in life. And we like the idea of being busy. 
and to get busier and busier and busier. You like to know, and you want people to know as well that you are an achiever, that you are powerful, you are important, you are special, that you are going somewhere with your life, that you live a hectic life. And if added to that, there is also a craving for possession, power, and prestige. You want to be rich. You like the idea of being popular, famous, to have it all. Then you will become very compulsive in achieving and pursuing success. You work longer and longer hours, have endless meetings and appointments, take on more and more projects and deals. You can stop, and you don't want to stop because you can't help yourself. Even when the requests people are making are small and not so important or urgent, you respond to them anyway. Even when there are no deadlines to meet, you organize deadlines for yourself because you're so addicted to being easy, busy. Busyness is an addiction. So busy until you have no time for yourself, no time to eat, no time to sleep, no time to rest. I was talking to a guy the other day. He said, Pastor, you can't imagine how busy I am. I'm so busy, I have no time to go to the toilet. So busy until you have no time for your family and your loved ones. Worst of all, worst of all, you have no time for God. No time to love Him, to worship Him, to wait in His presence for Him to speak to you, to guide you, to show you the way you should go. Your spiritual tank is already running so very low and your heart is frustrated and angry, feeling lonely and empty. This is the curse of busyness. And the truth is, most of us here, if not all of us, are very, very busy people. Very. Turn to somebody on your left and right and say, he's talking about you. <laughs> Jesus says, I have come that you may have life in all its fullness. He didn't come to give us life in all its busyness. Nowhere you find in the Bible does it ever say, be busy and know that I'm God. Nowhere. What does it say? Be still and know that I'm God. Psalms 46 and verse 10. This means you have to slow down. I have to slow down. We have to slow down. If we want to know God and to know Him well, be still and know. If you're busy, it's hard to know. We must stop living such a hectic life. When life gets too busy, we start to forget things. We can't focus. We forget our relationships with our loved ones. We have no more time for our husband or for our wife. We are too tired to even have time. We become unavailable to our kids, to our elderly parents. Worse still, the busier we are, the faster we forget the Lord. We become too busy for God. So one common question that so many people, including many of you in this church, you always ask me this, Pastor Kong, how do I balance my marriage with my career? With God, with church, with serving God in church. How do I find balance when the pressure of life is so enormous? How do I balance? Now this time you turn to your neighbors on your left and right and say, he's talking about me. <laughs> yeah. You want the answer? How to find balance? Yeah. How many of you want the answer? Put up your hands, yeah, yeah. It's very simple. 
you must slow down. If you just slow down your pace, balance will come to you automatically. You will find balance. One of the greatest passages in the Bible is Matthew chapter 11. And I think by now, if you have been around the last few years, I practically quote this verse every single week. Matthew 11 and verse 28, Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. What is Jesus saying? I want you to slow down. Stop living such a busy, hectic life. Look at verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. What must we learn from Jesus? We must learn to slow down the pace of life. Just read the Gospels. When you read about Jesus, he knew when to rest and how to rest. Jesus says, if you can do this, you will be changed. You won't be so angry and intense all the time. You won't be so frustrated and irritable when you're talking, meeting, driving. Instead, Jesus says, you'll become like me. You will learn to be like me. So how is Jesus like? For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. You will find the easy yoke and the light burden. And that means there is a supernatural ease in everything that you do, and you will enjoy life again. How many of you want to learn from Jesus and to be more like him? Just lift up your hands. Then there are five things that you must learn from him. Five things that I want to share with you today that will revolutionize your life. Turn your neighbors on your left and right and say, get ready to learn from Jesus. Number one, it takes me three years to get to this point. Slow down spirituality. <laughs> Jesus has a slow down spirituality. <laughs> it takes me three years to bring you to this place where I can share this with you. His pace of life was very different and much, much slower than ours. When you read the Gospels, Jesus always had time to hold a child, to stop and pray for a sick person. Always he finds the opportunity to spend time with family and friends. He was never in a rush. He was never overwhelmed by schedule. On the way to Jairus' house, Jesus, he knew he had to go there to pray for the dying daughter. Yet, he had the time and took time to slow down and talk to the woman with the issue of blood. He was never pushed or pulled by the tyranny of the urgent. It took Jesus four days to respond to Mary and Martha after Lazarus died. Four days. And it wasn't because he didn't care. No, he loved them a lot. He cared a lot. Jesus just chose to live an unhurried life. He chose not to be pushed or to be pulled or to be pressured by people around him and by external demands. He will not be rushed into doing things and making decisions. Many years ago, a Japanese theologian, Kosuke Koyama, I got to say it right, I, I, I would say Kosuke Koyama, and then Naomi, our wonderful Japanese staff, say, Pastor, that's wrong, it's Kosuke Koyama. <laughs> Kosuke Koyama wrote a beautiful book called Three Miles an Hour God. What kind of God is he? He's a three miles an hour God. This is the average speed 
a human being walks. This is the speed that Jesus walked, three miles an hour. Jesus is love. So this is the speed of love. Pastor Koyama says, and I put it on the screen for you, but I got to read it here. God walks slowly because he's love. Love has his speed. It is an inner speed. It is a spiritual speed. Love goes on in the depth of your life or our life, whether we notice or not, whether we are currently hit by storm or not, at three miles an hour. It is the speed the love of God walks. Beautiful, right? Koyama calls on us to slow down and to tune in to the speed and the pace of God's love. And to see exactly what this love looks like. Isn't that challenging? Very challenging, right? Used to be very challenging for me, but I have no choice. I was taken away. <laughs> and in that place, I could examine clearly what love is like. How can we slow down when the world is so busy? When work is so much? When people's expectations are so high? And everything is driving us to move faster, 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 do more, 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 quick, quick, quick. How to stop? But for me, it was when I slowed down that I could properly deal with my anger problem. Yeah. Pastor, how do you do it? How to achieve zero anger? How to have unlimited patience? In the past, I was moving at such high speed. I was angry all the time. I was easily irritable, frustrated. I was like a walking time bomb. Impatient, unkind with people. And I was losing my inner joy. Because how can you be happy when you're angry and frustrated and stressed all the time? How to be happy like this? But when I learned to slow down, even if just for a bit, even if just for a little, suddenly I could focus on the fruit of the Spirit. Like what Pastor Koyoma says, I could slow down to see clearly what God's love is like. That love is patient. That love is kind. I could let the Holy Spirit say to me in the heat of the moment, no Kong, don't do that. Don't say that. Don't think like that. Don't behave like that. Love is humble. Love is is gentle. So when I slow down my pace, I find myself more responsive to the Spirit. And I can draw closer and closer to God and become more and more loving to people around me. Moving too fast is one sure way you will never deepen love in your life which is the greatest thing you must aim for because the greatest is love. But when you're too busy, it is impossible to deepen in love. We must slow down our pace of life. Turn to your neighbors on your left and right and say, you got to slow down your pace of life. <laughs> Are you ready to learn the second thing from Jesus? Yeah, yeah. Number two. Sabbath rest. <laughs> Sabbath rest. For many years, Mrs. Cho, who together with Dr. Cho built the world's largest church in the history of the world. Can you imagine the two most successful pastors in the history of the world? And she would tell me, Kong, one day in a week, you must take the Sabbath rest. But I didn't get it. <laughs> I said, I'll rest when my church is as big as yours. <laughs> I didn't get it. Kong, 
one day in a week. You work six days, seven day, you rest. I didn't get it until a few years ago because rest was forced on me. But how greatly it enriched my soul. Right from the very beginning of creation, we see God taking the Sabbath rest. On the seventh day, He rested. Come on, talk to me. On the seventh day, God rested. God rested. Is it because He was tired? He had no more energy? His battery had run out? His fuel cell cannot, after creating the universe, there's no more fuel cell. No. God rested to take a break so that He could enjoy His creation. He could have the necessary time and space for loving communion with us and to deepen relationships. That is the purpose of the Sabbath rest. And you know something? Adam was created at the end of the sixth day. That means the first full day for human, for man, was the Sabbath rest. The very first thing Adam did and experienced was the love of God and to enjoy God. Wow. Humankind was created to rest in God, Amen. to enjoy God, to worship God, to commune with God, to be loved by God, to deepen our relationship with Him. This is what the Sabbath rest is for. And Jesus showed us how. We want to learn from Him, right? Every Sabbath, He stopped working for a day. He stopped being a carpenter for a day and he didn't work from home. <laughs> Instead, he spent time in the house of God. It's like he went to church to worship his heavenly father, to listen to sermons, and to pray for one another. And he didn't spend, of course, the whole day in the synagogue. Outside of God's house, Jesus used the Sabbath to enjoy fellowship, to deepen his friendship and relationship with mom, with brothers, with sisters, and with friends. This is what the Sabbath rest is for. You need rest in your soul, Jesus says, Matthew 11, you need to find that rest inside in order to get the easy yoke yeah. and to find the supernatural ease when you go back to work. Then you'll find the light burden. Life will not be so hard going. And you will finally get the balance that you're seeking for. Now, closely linked to this is number three, silence and solitude. Silence and solitude. See, tonight I'm giving you all the heavyweight stuff. <laughs> Took me three years to get you to this place. Jesus worked hard. He was not lazy. And the people loved him because he always did everything very well. Do you know there's a verse, Mark 7, 37? Jesus always do everything very well. He had high excellence in his work. High, high excellence. But in Luke chapter 5, we have a summary statement of Jesus' ministry. This is a summary statement. Luke 5 verse 15. Yet the news about him spread all the more, so that crowds of people came to hear him and be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Jesus always withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Can this be said of you and me? Pastor Kong often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. San often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Pastor Meng Hao always withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Sister Chen Ying always withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Can this be said of us? Silence and solitude is one of the most striking things you see in the life of Jesus Christ. There was this constant rhythm of retreat and return. Retreat and return. Retreat and return. Yeah. 
in his entire ministry. There was always this back and forth between time alone with God in silence and solitude, in prayer and rest, and in teaching and preaching, healing the sick, casting out demons, back and forth, back and forth, retreat and return, retreat and return. In fact, the more popular and in demand Jesus was, the more he would quietly go away to pray and rest, to gather his thoughts, to gather his soul, and to get direction and clarity from his heavenly Father. That's why Jesus is able to say, whatever you do, whatever you say, I do the same. Sometimes you need to do less in order to do more. This is so important that in two weeks' time, Sun and I are taking 60 of our pastoral staff and HODs for silence and solitude retreats. No phone, no laptop, no iPad, no TV, no radio, no board game, no card game, no mahjong. <laughs> Each learning to be alone and quiet before God for a few days. And we are very excited because Professor Roger Houser and his wife Gail are coming to conduct this. Sun and I studied under Professor Roger, but he's closer to Sun because he has a PhD in leadership and Sun is doing her second master's under him. But for us, the big, big deal of Professor Roger is that he and his wife are the world experts in silence and solitude. Sister Gail is an ordained minister and the senior chaplain in a hospice. And they are both here to lead our pastors and our HODs into it. By the way, Professor Roger Houser is a cancer survivor, stage four lymphoma, and he was healed. Yeah. Oh, let's give God a big hand. Hallelujah. Amen. Slowing down, Sabbath rest, silence, and solitude to enjoy God. How many of you know? All these things are absolutely, completely counterintuitive to everything we have in our world today. Yeah. Everything around us is loud and noisy. We hate being alone. We like everything instant, fast, quick, quick, quick. And there's no time to rest because even after we have worked hard, we want to play hard. <laughs> you know? Remember YOLO? FOMO, phobi. What is phobi? F-O-B-I. Fear of being insignificant. <laughs> Fear of being insignificant. See, I mean, no choice. If you've got a son who is Gen Z, you've got to learn all this thing, you know? Turn to your neighbors and say, no FOMO, no phobi. Yeah, you've got a Gen Z boy at home. You have to learn all these things. Yeah. Silence and solitude, let me tell you this, it's an acquired taste, it's like eating sashimi. <laughs> the first time you try sashimi, you're not gonna be used to it. But the more you eat it, the more you love it. Let me show you a revelation, a revelation that I have that changed my life. A revelation that I've grown to love. I've never shared this with, with you before, I'm gonna share this with you. In Mark chapter 6 and verse 31, this was Jesus just before feeding the 5,000. So look at verse 31. Then because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. When you do silence and solitude for the first time, you're not going to be used to it, especially for those who are extroverts. Being quiet will not come easy to you. And those of you who know me, <laughs> you know, I'm not so quiet. I'm a preacher, I'm a leader, I have to talk all the time. I need to communicate, give instructions. But there's one advice from Paul that really blessed me. When I read it for the first time, it changed my life. First Thessalonians chapter four, verse 10 and 11. I urge you, brothers and sisters, to make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. How many of you have ambitions like that? 
You see that? Paul says your ambition should be to learn how to be quiet. <laughs> For someone who has to talk all the time, the longer I walk with Jesus, the more I understand this. There is a beauty and glory in being quiet. You're in a state of shock, I can tell. Yeah, turn to your neighbors on your left and right and say, there's a beauty in being quiet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The fourth thing we must learn from Jesus is devotional prayer. Devotional prayer. Dr. Cho always says, prayer is devotion, but prayer is also petition and intercession. The problem is when we put too much focus on prayer intercession. Prayer intercession is very important because we all have needs and we need to pray in faith for God to meet our needs. And we also care for other people. We care about evangelism and missions. We want to see revival. We want to change the world. We want to take Asia by storm. <laughs> we care about the Missio Day, the mission of God. But we must balance that up with the Imago Day, the image of God. You don't want to win the whole world and lose your own soul and not grow in the image and likeness of God. Yeah, what is the point of being so excited in the beginning? But as you serve and serve and serve, you become dry and jaded and your heart grows cold and cynical, do us God, do us one another, do us the church. Yeah. Then what's the point, right? Yeah. Now it's not either or, you gotta choose one and reject the other. No, you need both. The Imago Day and the Missio Day, and you must be able to blend the two, to integrate the two. You need to be like Jesus in his Imago Day and be effective in the Missio Day. Everything you do in life for God must be the result of the overflow of God's love and compassion. Oh, hallelujah, amen. Come, let's give the Lord a big clap, hallelujah. Now listen, but at the same time, you need the Missio Day to stimulate the growth of your Imago Day because Christ-likeness doesn't happen in a vacuum. You cannot sit at home, lock yourself up, and think you're gonna develop Christ-likeness. All the fruit of the Spirit can only blossom as you engage people, as you learn to love them, as you serve them. This is how you learn to be patient and kind. This is how you learn to be gentle and humble like Jesus. So you need the blending of both. And if the miss your day is all we have, I want revival. I, I, I live for revival. I want to see miracles. I want to do great things for God. I want to be successful and shine in the world to bring glory to God. <laughs> if that's all you have, sooner or later, it's very easy for you to dry up, burn out in your spiritual life, end up being very tired and cynical and become very unhappy and be an unfulfilled Christian. Yeah. So your praying cannot only be petition slash intercession. Lord, bless me, bless me, bless me. Give me, give me, give me. Do this for me, do that for me, and do all these things to all the people I care for. Then our relationship with God becomes very self-centered and transactional. It's a transaction. Your faith is a transaction. God, I give you my praise. God, I give you my prayer. God, I give you my faith. But in exchange, you better give me what I want. Otherwise, I pray for what? I believe for what? I come to church for what? No. Your prayer must also be devotional. An expression of our loving communion with the Lord. <laughs> Amen. That's right, you love the Lord, let's give the Lord praise, hallelujah, amen. So, 
This is the rhythm of Jesus' life. Devotion, action. Retreat, return. Imago day, miss your day. But this is a process you grow into. You don't just decide today, hallelujah, I respond. God, today I come forward. Yeah, I come forward. I'm, from today, I'm going to have balance. It won't happen. <laughs> it requires a lot of maturity. And this is the blend. The son and I are praying for our church that you will integrate devotion and action. That we do church out of love, out of joy, not out of pressure or out of guilt or out of pride. No, everything we do, our action, our missile day, must be an overflow of our devotion and our imago day. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So, when I'm talking about slowing down, resting, learning to enjoy God, I'm not promoting laziness, apathy, or as we say in Singapore, bochap, or becoming dull and passive, having no concern for revival or church growth, having no passion of doing great things for God. No, because you don't see that in Jesus. He was so on fire. He was very hard in the midst of your day. But he could blend. He could integrate. He had the maturity. Devotion, action. Retreat and return. Imago day and miss your day. Yes, you're full of visions and dreams. And you're willing to work hard. But you can also slow down and not be so busy. You can also rest. And you can be alone with God and wait patiently and quietly for Him. You can enjoy God devotionally and spend hours in His loving embrace. This is how a mature Christian looks like. This is how a mature church looks like. We have the ability to blend. Devotion, action. Turn to your neighbors on your left and right and say, devotion, action. Yeah, I see some of you doing the same action with me. That's wonderful. Hallelujah. <laughs> Finally, the last thing, number five. The fifth thing we can learn from Jesus, and this is possibly the hardest, detachment. <laughs> I'm teaching you very hard stuff today. Yeah, because our church is 30 over years, and God loves you. And God wants you to really grow deeper and deeper in His kingdom, in His likeness. Detachment. All throughout church history, Christians who have learned to develop a slow down spirituality, take regular Sabbath rest, spend time in silence and solitude, learning to be quiet, practice devotional prayer, they all say they somehow develop an inner freedom. There's a, something inside them that's free. Some call it a godly indifference. Some say it is a yieldedness. Personally, I prefer this word detachment because it's a word used by Pastor Kim Hock. And I like it very much. Pastor Kim Hock and I, we talk a lot about life and death, about faith and the sovereignty of God, about blessings and sufferings. So one day I asked him, Kim Hong, how are you feeling? He said, Pastor, if you ask me to be honest, I feel detached from all the worries and the concerns of this world. I love my wife, Lily, my kids. I love my family very much. And of course, I love the church. But I have this inner joy in the Lord. If God heals me of my cancer, I know I will continue to serve Him for the rest of my life. But if God doesn't heal me, I know that I know that I know that to be absent in this body is to be present with the Lord. And either way, I have this inner joy. If I'm here, I'll be happy to serve the Lord. I'm there, I'll be happy to be with Him. So I have absolutely no fear and no regrets. From that day, after that conversation, I fell in love with this word, detachment. It means to be free 
from the need for your life to go in a certain way in order for you to be happy and fulfilled. You need your life to go in a certain fashion in order for you to be happy, in order for you to be fulfilled. Oh, you know what? You know, I need to achieve certain level of success and, and popularity and fame. Then I will be happy. I need to be with certain people in order for me to feel fulfilled. I need certain recognition and position in order for me to feel my life has meaning. I need to have this much money and security in order for me to feel I'm going to be okay. Detachment is this very simple idea that come what may, no matter what happens, be it good or bad, you're okay. And you are not being emotionally repressed or you're in denial, no. But there is this genuine joy and peace that your happiness is not dependent on your life needing to go in a certain way. For Jesus Christ, there was a detachment from all the needs and cravings of this world. So you don't find any frustration or fear in Jesus. Jesus was very happy in his heavenly Father, even if it means going to the cross, to be rejected by people, to suffer shame and loss, and to die a painful death. He didn't feel that he was losing out, that he wasted his life in trusting God. So it doesn't matter if I'm healthy or sickly, if I'm wealthy or poor, if I have success or failure, if I'm very popular or nobody knows me. If I live a long life or a short life, it really doesn't matter. Whatever happens, good or bad, God will be there with me. And He will give me the grace. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. No matter what happens, good or bad, God will be there in the trenches of life. He will give me the grace and use whatever I'm going through to draw me deeper and deeper into his loving embrace. And through it all, the Holy Spirit will change me to be more like Jesus. So no matter what happened, I'm gonna enjoy God more and more. Wow, when you can have this kind of mindset, you will start experiencing heavenly joy every single day. You will live with a real freedom inside your heart. Yes. Guys, you have to slow down. How to stop being so busy and tired and stressed out and feeling dry and empty? How to live a happy, balanced life? You need those five things. Number one, slow down spirituality. Number two, Sabbath rest. Number three, silence and solitude. Number four, devotional prayer. Number five, detachment. Those five things. If you can practice these regularly, I promise you, you will experience the life of the Spirit in a brand new way. The awareness of God, the reality of His presence, it, it's like God is born anew in your heart. There will be a joy unspeakable and full of glory. A deep, deep intimacy with God. You will experience for the first time a real freedom from the bondage of frustration and anger and all those sin like greed and pride and lust. You will be free from needing to prove yourself to protect yourself, to secure your own future. You will discover full and true freedom in Jesus Christ. Tonight, how many of you want to live a less busy life? Put up your hands, yeah. I'm not asking you to be lazy. 
or they have no more vision. I'm talking about being like Jesus, learning to do less in order to do more. Living a more balanced life, a slower life, a quieter life, an unhurried life. How many of you want to be happier and more fulfilled in your life with the Lord? Why don't we all stand up to worship the Lord tonight? Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And tonight, this is what I want you to do. I want you to be very devotional to the Lord Jesus Christ. I want there to be a deep love from our hearts for Him. A deep, deep yearning from the inside for God. Hallelujah. Why don't we just lift up holy hands? Let us worship the Lord. Shikarabahade ala karaba. Surya ala karabahade ala karabaha. Let's just take a moment to pray for a moment, right? Hallelujah. Shuturi ala karabahade ala karabahada. Lord, we love you. 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 Shuturi ala karabahade ala karabahade ala karabahade. Who is like you, Lord? Just love the beauty in this world. Nothing in this world will satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Your presence, your presence is there. Talk to him in tongues right now. Just reach out to the Lord. 
Just love him, just love him, just love the Lord, Jesus. Many of you are holding such a heavy burden. You have such a heavy yoke. Jesus says, come to me. Come to me and I will give you rest. Come to me and you find rest in your soul. And then there will be a supernatural ease and supernatural joy. You'll find an easy yoke. You'll find a light burden. You'll be in the world but not of the world. And you will learn to be like me. Humble, gentle, and powerful. And Jesus was very powerful. Everything he did, he did it so well. And he fulfilled the mission of God for his life. He became the savior of the world. Tonight, how many of you, maybe, you know, mentally you love the Lord. God is there. God is always somewhere at the back of your mind. He's the center in your home. He's there. He's a silent listener. You know that. But you're not putting Him the place that He's supposed to be. You want to slow down a little bit. Sometimes doing less will help you to do more. I believe 100% another wave of revival is coming. I believe no doubt whatsoever God's going to use City Harvest Church in ways that eyes have not seen ears have not heard neither has it entered into the hearts of men but I don't want us to be so busy and so stressed that the miss your day is our all in all I want everything we do big things little things to flow out that Imago day, to flow out that devotion. How many of you tonight, you say, Pastor, that's me. Lord, I'm so sorry. Lord, I've been so busy. I forget, I have forgotten you. Too busy to worship, too busy to be still, too busy to be quiet in your presence and wait patiently for you. How many of you tonight, you want to come back to the Lord? If that's you, when I count to three, just lift up your hands. One, two, three, lift up your hands all over this place. Hallelujah. Why don't you just give me a D? I'm coming back to the heart of worship. It's all about you. It's all about you. I'm sorry, Lord, for oh, the things I made. But it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. When the music fades. Song in itself 
is not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to It's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I made, but it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I bring you more than a song. More than a song I bring you more than a song More than a song That's right, just tell him tonight You're looking into my heart all your busyness put aside all the cares of this world we all have many responsibilities we have our family we got to provide for our children young people you have your studies you have a career we have promotions and KPIs to achieve and then we got to serve in church some of your cell leaders ministry leaders and you have debts you have service Come to me. I will give you rest. You're looking into my heart. Into my heart. I bring you more. I bring you more than a song. More than looking into my heart you're looking into my heart into my heart just receive the love of God you're looking into my heart into my
say this prayer together with me right now? Let's all say this together. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, forgive me for being so busy. Give me the grace to slow down my life. Yes, I will work hard. But I want a slower pace so that I can love you more. Worship you more. Be still to know you. And wait for you. Just talk to the Lord in tongues right now. Hallelujah. Waiting on the Lord, waiting on the Lord. Even as Pastor was preaching and teaching us of this slowdown, spirituality. I don't know whether you heard this one statement that he made. But when he made that statement, when I heard it, my heart squeezed so hard. Because it was as if God was speaking directly into my heart. Pastor spoke and talked about the purpose of you and I needing to slow down because of this one thing because God loves us and when I said that I could hear God say I love you I want you to experience my love not just the purpose the adrenaline the momentum the success but I want you to experience my love for you City Harvest Church Jesus on that cross he told the Father that He prayed for you and I. That we may have a relationship that He has with the Father. The love that they shared. And I truly believe that God is speaking to us this evening. For so many of us, we have a form of godliness and outward shell of what being a Christian is like but our heart has grown cold towards God our thoughts have traveled so far away from God and tonight believe that he is calling us home he's calling us back to experience the love that he shared with the father and if we were to have that love we never need to succumb to the demand of this life or to lead a life that we don't want to or to be a person that we don't desire and don't even like to be. So may we come into His presence. Why don't we just tell the Lord, Lord, I just want to come to Your presence. I want to come back to Your love in Your own way. Just take a moment, just tell the Lord that. 
Let's respond to that message. Let's respond to that calling of God. That love of God. God loves us. God loves you. God loves you. He's drawing you. He's drawing us. He's drawing you. He's drawing us as a church. Come to that place of devotion and action. Come to that place of rest and retreat. Come to a place of easy yoke and light burden. Come to that place of the Imago day and the Missio day. Suduri ala karabaha, dari ala karabaha, dari ala karabaha, dari ala karabaha, dari ala karabaha. The greatest thing in all my life is knowing you, loving you. The greatest thing in all. Father, we thank you tonight for your presence in this place. Lord, it's been such a joy to, to come to the house, your house, to be blessed by your spirit, to be enriched by your word, to enjoy the fellowship, the koinonia of our brothers and our sisters. Lord, we just pray tonight, help us to have a slower pace of life. Help us to take our Sabbath rest. Help us to learn to enjoy you, Lord. We are resting not just to recharge our body, but to enjoy you and to deepen our relationship with people that matters most in, in our life. Lord, help us to learn to be still in your presence, to wait upon you and to know that you are God. Father, we just pray tonight, teach us to grow, that we just don't live for the world, all the pressures and the demands of this world, there's a detachment because we live for you and we are satisfied by you. So I thank you for every brother and sister. I thank you for City Harvest Church. Thank you for this great church. Thank you. You're taking us deeper in you. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone say amen. Let's just give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to know, love you more. I want to love you. I want to love you. Take it higher. Let's sing one key higher. The greatest thing in all my life is loving you. The greatest thing in all my life is love.
somebody say amen. Let's just give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Woo! Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a big clap. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Retreat, return. Right? Devotion, action. It may go day, miss your day. Have the balance. Slow down a little bit. And everybody say, Amen. Before you go tonight, turn to your neighbors on your left and right and say, Be still and know that He is God. God bless you. You have a great night. See you next week.